Today we replaced the fuel pressure regulator on the 2002 Chevy Avalanche. From 2000 to mid-year 2003, the 5.3 liter Avalanches, uh, Suburbans, Silverados and Yukons, the regulator was located on the driver's side by the fuel rail here. They were later put inside the fuel tank from mid-year 2003, I believe. This new one we ordered comes with everything we need to make this easy replacement and I'll leave the link in the description for more information. And to make sure it fits your vehicle, you can fill in the uh, vehicle year and model in the fitment filter in the app. We'll uh, get more into this part as we go further into the installation. The first thing, we take off the plastic engine cover using an 8mm socket. This is not to get to the regulator, but because once it's removed, we're able to get to test the fuel pressure with a fuel pressure gauge by connecting it to the Schrader valve here on the passenger side of the engine. So we remove the cap and thread in the gauge fitting. As we turn the key, the fuel pressure built up to 58 pounds. And then dropped to 52 pounds as soon as we started the engine and while idling. That's not bad according to the research I've done, but once we turned it off, it went down too quick for my liking. I couldn't find any information on how much pressure it should be holding and for how long, but this can't be normal. But it's going fast again. Uh, 20, Just for the record, the only thing we've ever done to this uh, fuel system in this truck is to change the fuel filter and recently we changed the fuel cap since it was the original and everything else it's still original. In less than five minutes, it was down to zero. We're hoping this new fuel pressure regulator will improve the start and retain pressure much longer than the old one did. Included in the new regulator is the C-clamp or clip here. But for the 2002 Avalanche 1500 5.3 LSs, we will only need this type of clip with the regulator. To avoid fuel from spilling everywhere, we put a shop rack to catch it and make sure the engine is not hot when doing this. First disconnect the vacuum line from the regulator. By looking at the new clip, you can clearly see the two bottom ends that just need to be spread and the clip will release. Like that. If you're removing an original, I suggest to use the original clip with the new regulator. Yes, reuse the old one. Without getting into a long explanation, just try flexing the new spring and compare it to the original one. Then decide which one you choose to use with the new regulator. Now moving on, once the clip is removed, a good precaution is to gradually wiggle the regulator off. This is to make sure any pressure still on the fuel rail doesn't spray everywhere, especially your eyes. Notice the screen on the old one is missing because it's still stuck in the housing. And using the pick tool, we pull it out. But there's still an O-ring missing. It's important to make sure it gets pulled out as well. And there it is. and now we're ready to insert the new one. But first, we put some lubricant around the two new O-rings on the new regulator. We double check to make sure the housing is clear of any debris. Then carefully insert the new one in with the vacuum peg facing up, same as the old one. Once it's flush, insert the old clip, as mentioned before, and be sure to face it up the right way. The 
top notch needs to be inside the clip which holds it pressed against the housing. And the sides of course need to be clipped into the slots towards the bottom on each side. Now we can insert the vacuum line back into the regulator and with the pressure valve still connected we're going to check for leaks when we start it up and see if there's any pressure difference. As soon as we started the engine the pressure built right up, up quickly to 58 pounds and stayed at 52 pounds while idling just like the other one. Once we turned it off it still goes down but not as fast as before the replacement. The pressure still goes down but much slower than before. Twenty minutes later it's still at five pounds and still there overnight. This definitely improved the fuel system and we will still continue to improve it further as we do more research on uh, what to replace next on this 20 year old Chevy. And that's about it. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you along the way. And if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comments. See the description for links of tools and materials used in this video. And you all have a great day.